If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Sponsored by MIGardener.com with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic, flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. MIGardener.com Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. Today we're going to start onions and leeks inside. Uh, we want to start these about 10 to 12 weeks before your last average frost date. Now we've been starting onions and leeks indoors for a number of years now and we've tried many different techniques and different ways of starting them. This has been the method, what I'm going to show you, that we've done for a number of years now that we have found to be the utmost success uh, from start to finish. So what we've got here, uh, we're going to go over the type of onion in a moment, but I'll, I'll tell you what we got to set up here. We've just got ordinary standard potting soil. We've got a 10 by 20 flat without holes in it because we're going to bottom water. We're going to set water in here and let it wick up. These are one gallon, and I've got a two gallon, but these are one gallon root maker grow bags. These come from one gallon all the way up to 45. Links in the show notes if you want to look at the other options. What we have found that works best is we, we're going to plant our seeds, we're going to bottom water, and there's a, so much good, there's so much mass of soil in here, it holds the moisture and it allows the seed to have ambient moisture in order for it to grow properly. We'll talk about growing under grow lights as well. But what we found is when we just started in this kind of this seed tray, we just broadcast them, there wasn't enough root space for development. It just watered all up in the bottom and they were spindly plants. When we tried to do the peat pots or the peat pellets, that wasn't very functional either because you're putting one in a peat pellet and they do not have nutrient value. So you're going to have to supplement them with some type of organic or inorganic nutrients about four weeks after you planted the seed. This here, we've got good nutrients, a good deep root system, uh, area for the root system for it to grow and they, they've done the best. And at the time of planting, when they are nice and uh, bushed up and, and several hundred plants in this container, we simply tip it out, let the roots are all loose, they're individually able to be removed without tearing or disturbing other plants, uh, other seedlings there, we plant them in, they're ready to go. So let's talk about there's three different categories in which onions fall under that many people are not familiar with. And that's why you may not have had the success that you felt you should have when growing onions in your raised bed or ground garden or in containers. So onions are in short day, long day, and neutral day categories. What that entails is short day, it's based on the duration of sunlight during the, during the day. We're in the northern hemisphere, we're in the northern portions of the United States in the Wisconsin area. Anything from about central Illinois, kind of draw a line across the United States, north, you're going to look at long day onions because during the peak summer you have 12 to 15 hours of sunlight. That's what the onions use and, and trigger their development of the bulb uh, in growing. Central portion of the United States, we'll say St. Louis, San Francisco, over Washington, D.C., kind of in that belt there, you want neutral day. South of, uh, in the south, you want short day. Now, if you get a long day and try to grow in the south or a short day and try to grow in the north, you will get an onion. You're just going to get top green growth. You'll get very little to no bulb development. So we want to keep that in mind when we're searching for onions, uh, when we get them from MI Gardener or other seed suppliers, or you go to your garden center and buy the variety that you think is best. So that's what you're wanting to do. They have now begun to label the short day, long day, neutral day. Years past, they haven't. You just had to know the variety in which category they fell, uh, fell under. Number one best way to, to, to grow onions from seed. Second best is from uh, starts. That's the live plants that you purchase from the garden center, uh, the pencil-like uh, diameter. The, the worst kind we have found and others have found is the sets, the little already small onions that you're putting in the ground in order to get a big onion. The reason why that doesn't work that well is because onions are biannuals. They flower or go to seed their second year. So those little bulbs have been grown, harvested, went through a dormancy process to your garden center. You purchased them, planted them. They believe they're in their second year and a the majority of them will flower 
You can still eat the bulb if they have flour. You just can't store the bulb because the seed stalk goes all the way through the bulb. All right, so that's your little lesson there. So here's what we're gonna do. Each one of these contain about 250 seeds. So we've got them labeled here and we're just gonna take and we're going to broadcast all 250 seeds in this one gallon grow bag. Got moist soil there. And you want to label these because if you don't, you won't know what they are until they uh, develop in the garden. So we just want to broadcast them around decent. They're going to, you're overseeding, yes, but you're putting, you've got good nutrient uh, potting soil here, not some uh, sandy loam or cheap uh, stuff you got on sale. Good potting soil. And then we just want to lightly cover the seeds here. If you put a little too much on, it's fine. They will come up in about seven to 10 days and we want a good soil to seed contact. And that's the way we do it. Now for leeks, we're gonna do the same way. The leeks are the same type of seeds, but leeks you can grow anywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter. They're not daylight sensitive like onions are. So I'm gonna get the rest of these planted and then we'll talk about growing them under a grow light to get them established before it's time to take them outside. So we get all the seeds planted and we put them underneath our grow lights or from Happy Leaf LED. Now we'll talk about the grow lights in a minute, but what we've done here, we talked about bottom watering. So we're just going to fill the, the tray up till it's with these particular grow bags about an inch and it will wick the water up and there's a tremendous amount, tremendous amount of mass of soil here that will absorb the water. Now you do not want to let this consistently set in water. So if you see after a couple of hours that there's still a lot of water in there, you want to drain it off. That can cause a lot of issues. Uh, oversaturation of soil is not what these seeds want. They need moisture but they don't need to be sitting in a swamp. Now what we are not doing is we're not physically pouring water on top of here. The reason being is these seeds are very, uh, they're, they're under the soil less than a quarter of an inch. We water them, we're going to displace them. Now we did just broadcast them on top there, but we want to kind of keep them as the way they are. We don't want them all pulled over on one side. It's going to hurt uh, overall growth of them. So what you can do is one, we can just let it wick up naturally. That'll work fine. An additional option you can do is take wet paper towels. And you can do this on a seed tray as well and just layer them on top, put two or three on top. Now, some people will say that paper towels have a certain level of toxicity in it because of the chemicals. That, that's up to you to decide whether or not you choose to use this method or not. You can do this and this will actually accelerate the germination rate and the speed in which they germinate because your moisture is consistent around it. This is a rosemary. These are rosemary seeds that I started less than two weeks ago. You can see I've got two of them germinating here. These typically take about 25 days. I kept them consistently moist and put the towel on top of them. And this was actually setting on a radiator so it had a lot of bottom heat as well. So it does speed up the germination rate uh, on this. So that being said, we'll cover all of these. And these will germinate. And once you see, I covered this back up, I'm going to wait two or three more days to see if I can get any more germination out of these. If you leave the towel on, the paper towel on there, and it's still damp, and you forget to take it off, it's not going to hurt the plants. They still believe they're underground trying to pierce through. So it's not, if you leave them on two or three days longer than what you think, it's not going to hurt. You remove them, they'll be fine. So we put them underneath our Happy Leaf LED grow lights now. These are older models. These are 18 inch long uh, Happy Leaf LEDs. You can, they have a multiple different, um, they have several different sizes of, of LED lights. The advantage to using the LED lights, in this instance, the Happy Leaf versus a traditional tube light is, one, the footprint of light that it uh, emits. It can do three trays wide. If you're familiar with a traditional tube light, it's very low footprint impact on it. It's just basically right right underneath the, the light is where the the, the light will uh, work. These will cast out quite a ways. The other advantage to the LEDs here, this Happy Leaf is, this is about 14, 16 inches above the seed trays. 
We don't have to do anything else. Tube light, you got to put them right down to the light, and even then, uh, you can develop legginess because there's not enough light emitting from the, the tube in, uh, around the plant. Legginess is when the plant grows really, really tall, really, really quick, very uh, spindly stem, and they fall over. If you, even if you don't have a grow light, you can experience that because they're stretching for light. With the LED Happy Leafs, you don't have to do that because the amount of light is coming down on here. Uh, you do not have to have uh, grow lights to start seeds indoors. It is a wonderful tool and an investment which greatly helps the success and the health of your seedlings before you put them outside. Now tube lights and LEDs, there's a whole science behind them. And Vic, we interviewed he, uh, Victor, he is the inventor and owner of Happy Leaf LED. I want him to explain the difference in light spectrum and energy use and output on an LED compared to a tube light. Uh, and a tube light you have to replace almost every year. These are 50,000 hours uh, continuous use without, or 50,000 hours of use, and there's really no diminish in the actual intensity of the light. So we'll let Vic explain the science portion of it to you. Okay. So plants, and I'm going to get a tiny bit technical okay. here. All right. So 450 nanometer blue light allows the plant to have a strong stem and bushy. 660 nanometer red light is what causes the plant to grow vertically and to flower. Without red light, you cannot flower. And plants actually absorb 100% of the red light that they receive and about 85 or so percent of the blue light. And they only absorb about 50% of the green light. That's why plants look green to us because they're reflecting that light. So they don't absorb it or they don't you know, use it as efficiently, but we need the plants to look green. So we need to put a little bit of green light in there so that the plants also look really good and healthy. So what you're doing is you're taking science and adjusting the light that is required and giving the plant what it actually needs and not any more. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Before I let you go, I want to talk about with a tube light, you got to replace it every year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. These do not diminish in intensity, correct? No, they don't diminish significantly. So if you do use them every day for a long period, after 10 years, you may actually have a 10 to 15 percent reduction. Which is virtually, it's virtually you can't nothing. tell. You can't yeah. tell, right. So the key is the light is kept cool, mm -hmm. and this is an aluminum extrusion. Which yeah, there's no heat to that at yeah, all. It, there's a little bit. It's yeah. warm. But, but not to like a but, traditional tube light. That's right, yeah, yeah. because with an LED light, to give a quick another technical yeah, yes, thing, yes. an incandescent bulb, only 4% of the energy going into an incandescent bulb is light. 96% is heat. Mm. In a fluorescent bulb, 10% is light, 90% is heat. In an LED, it's 40% is light, and 60% is still heat, but because you're getting 40% light out, you're 10 times more efficient than incandescent and about four times more efficient than a, fluores a fluorescent okay. bulb. So it's really interesting how much energy is put in versus how much is put out. And these uh, get slightly warm, but nothing like a normal light would. So with that all being said, uh, we got our uh, leeks and our onions planted here. Again, look at your area and the specific type of onion that is uh, grown for your area. Long day, a neutral day or, or midday, or a short day onions. And that will greatly increase the success of what your onion harvest will be. Thanks for joining me. Join me again next time for more organic gardening and seed starting. I'm Joy Barrett and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.